There's a legend not often told louder than a whisper, so as not to disturb the children's studies. It was during the 1830s. New York City was devastated by disease and fire. Cholera spread over the city. Fires blazed through hot summer nights because of lack of water to fight the fire and clean the streets of disease and foul odor. Drinking water was contaminated. Finally, someone thought of building the aqueduct from Croton to the city. It became the first of its kind constructed in the United States and brought New York City a successful public water supply system. The enclosed structure is based on a gravity system. The old Croton Reservoir runs from the Croton Dam along the Hudson River through Dobbs Ferry and into Manhattan. It was built primarily by lively Irish immigrant laborers. They were paid between 75 cents to a dollar a day for 10 hours work. The old Croton Aqueduct runs behind the Dobbs Ferry Middle High School. Several schools preceded this one, including the original middle school on Broadway, now buried under the school's south field. The new high school was built, and later the present modern middle school. We owe today's high school to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He inherited the aftermath of the Great Depression and declared that the government must wage war on the Great Depression. His New Deal program was based on the three R's, relief, recovery, and reform. Through the Federal Emergency Relief Act, immediate relief was given for wages and work projects. The Civilian Conservation Corp created about three million forestry jobs. The Agricultural Adjustment Act and Homeowners Loan Corp helped farmers with their mortgages. His Civil Works Administration created jobs like seasonal maintenance. The Works Progress Administration even gave students job opportunities. The current Dobbs Ferry High School was established in 1934 and is among many schools of similar style built to generate jobs under the New Deal program. Roosevelt made major achievements in recouping the economy. Most would agree that he fought an economical war and won. An open path of steps joins the aqueduct to the back of the school. It was a common route for the school children, and they often gathered at these back stairs. Was it a good path for a ghost? Apparently. There was a young girl claimed to be seen from time to time. Sort of plain, average, not as thin as girls are today. Healthy. She had light brown hair. She wore it long and pulled back on either side away from her face sort of like Mary Ingalls used to on Little House on the Prairie. She wore a blouse and a jumper. The first time Jody saw her, she didn't say anything. She was just all of a sudden, just there, and then gone. Sometimes if you walk the aqueduct, you could catch a glimpse of her heading towards the school. Sometimes if you pass by her, she would say, I'm going home now, and then she'd be gone. Jody once heard her say she was lost, but that she was going home now. Most of the time, however, she would just politely smile as she passed by and fade away. She became known as the Lilac Girl, because whenever she passed by you, there was this faint and lingering smell of lilacs. She once passed by two high school children sitting on the school steps, and then she disappeared behind a tree. The smell of lilacs filled the air. The girl asked her classmate if he had seen a woman. He had. They looked back to where she should be headed and saw only her shoes heading up the path. And that wasn't the last time those shoes were seen. Who could this young girl be? There was once a house on the old Appleton estate before the school was ever built. In fact, it remained for some time behind the school. I've heard tell that the most delicate and aromatic lilac bushes surrounded the property. During the springtime, the air filled with a delicate aroma. The name lilac comes from the Persian word meaning bluish. The leaves are heart-shaped to ovate and grow opposite one another. The florets of the flower have four petals that grow in clusters called panicles. It has long been admired for its beauty and fragrance. Legend tells the journey of the lilac as having begun in the European Balkan countries. It was transplanted by shepherds to their homesteads, later carried along the silk route to Istanbul, the center of the Ottoman Empire, and in 1563 
the lilac was carried off to the court of Austria and into Paris. It was no time at all before these beautiful lilac bushes were found in gardens throughout Europe. Early settlers brought lilacs with them as they settled into North America. The lilac thrived, and it wasn't long before they became a common sight throughout the colonies. Could it be that the lilac became symbolic of a lost girl's journey home?